Hey guys, welcome to Research Friday. I'm Dr. Moll. I'm Dr. Crisp. And today we're just going to review an article from a peer-reviewed journal. And, and really the purpose of this is to assess the clinical evidence that's available to us and see if we can line that up with our clinical experience or even mm -hmm. enhance our clinical experience. Absolutely. And if you'd like to check out the article, just check the link below. All right. So the article we had today is Chronic Exertional Compartment Syndrome of the Leg from the uh, Current Review of Musculoskeletal Medicine from 2010. Yeah, a little outdated if you say 2010 uh, up till now, but I think really in this article, the content that you can take away will truly enhance your assessment, a aka your history, yes, and your prognosis discussion. Absolutely, especially when we start talking about uh, exertional compartment syndrome. It can come in as shin splints. Yeah, it mimics shin splints. All day mimics some of the peroneal um, tendonitis or yep. uh, muscular mm -hmm. problems there. Yep. I mean, really, if you're looking for an article that says, how can I fix chronic exertional compartment syndrome conservatively, this is probably not your best go-to. No, no. And nor really is there many go-to articles for that matter. Not, but not really. This is, a, this is a syndrome or condition that confuses even some of the best docs. Yeah. But yeah, great article. It does talk about differentials. So yes. you've got your differentials, as you mentioned, your shin splints. Uh, you've got your stress fractures. Yes. Your fascial distortion problems. Absolutely. Um, but really, I, I took away a lot here. And one of the things I learned the most um, out of this article was one simple piece of the history. Simple question. And I always thought chronic exertional compartment syndrome was primarily unilateral. One side. That's Absolutely. what I always thought. I always thought it too. But according to this, symptoms occur bilaterally 70 to 80 percent of the time. So when a person comes in and they go, yeah, I think I have pain in the front part of my leg. It hurts when I run a little bit or I walk. It gets really full of pressure. Simple question. Does it happen on both sides or one? Yep. They say both. This needs to pop in your head. Yeah, it should start being at the top of your Absolutely diagnosis list. Should. Absolutely. And then as you go through your history, you either keep it there or you knock it off. Absolutely. Right? Most of these patients with this condition, now I know when I went through school it was, it was always if they present with pain in the front of their legs, mm -hmm. it's compartment syndrome. It's compartment syndrome. Mm -hmm. And we see it's not that common. No. Um, true compartment true syndrome. True compartment syndrome. But these individuals do present with some symptoms that are similar to other conditions, but I think like you said, the biggest takeaway is if it goes away shortly after resting from that activity, you may want to start considering it. Especially right? if you've got, because um, we've all got those patients, the moms, they have to run for sanity. Yep. You know, I can think of one of mine. Um, she started running, it would happen at four miles, and then all of a sudden at three, and then at two, and then one, and then both, and you'd get work, it'd help, rest, nothing yeah. helped, nothing. Pain, tightness in the muscle. Absolutely. And I have to stop my activity because it just gets really it gets uncomfortable, uncomfortable and tight. Absolutely. Super tight. Yeah. Um, so when looking at individuals like this, you know, we always get a lot of questions. What is your go-to exam for it? Uh, yeah. What, so how do you what is examine it? this condition? How do you look at it? Yeah. And, and according to, to the study, there really isn't much of a exam to identify it. There's not. I mean, no. it says if the history and symptoms are convincing of the diagnosis, then you may want to start doing your workup in terms of imaging or what's considered gold standard. What is gold standard? Yeah, so in here it talks about the gold standard for compartment syndrome is really measured by intracompartmental pressures. So they call it the striker catheter. Ooh. And, and if I remember right, that's where they actually put you um, on a device, they make you go through some sort of activity mm -hmm. with needle insertion yep. into the compartments. Absolutely. And they can measure the pressure and they can measure what happens is the minute you cease that activity, exactly. do the values change. So if the values go up and then they come down, you've more than likely got compartments. Yeah. Them. Absolutely. Um, I haven't really seen many of these cases that are considered to be <clears throat> emergency based, like we always hear no. about. I've, I've never um, have. Those ones typically do not con come in the conservative route. No. But what we do see are kind of like you mentioned, you have those individuals that I need to continue my activity mm -hmm. for my personal goal or my sanity. Absolutely. But man, something is bothering my shins or mm -hmm. that area on a regular basis where my 
calf muscles are super tight yep. while I'm active and it goes away. Absolutely. Um, so really when we talk about conservative care, what are we looking at here? Well, if you look at the article, the main thing that they've actually talked about is that they were talking about deep tissue massage, ultrasound, stretching before exercise. They even go in and they say osteopathic physician, your chiropractic physician will manipulate the ankle and the knee. Um, and they can use uh, mild fascia release, counter strain and strain techniques. So pretty much everything, anything and almost everything yeah. that you could have in your bag of tricks, they've, they've thrown at this. Okay. And if the main thing that you need to understand is that if what you're doing is not making a long-term effect, you need to slow down. You need to pay attention and go, mm, something else may be going on here. And that's, and that's the person, like we talked about, that lady. Her mileage started decreasing, we started co-managing her the way you're supposed to, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Um, got a podiatrist involved, and podiatrist, then we started getting yeah. her off, to, and they did the striker. Yeah. And now she's been diagnosed, and now she's got the procedure, and she's doing so much better. I mean, that's really <coughs> what we want. Um, Absolutely. You know, another really interesting piece here is similar. When I read it, I thought immediately of adhesive capsulitis. When yes. I look at adhesive capsulitis patients, those are the ones that come into conservative offices delayed. Very much so. So they start off like a, I just had a sore shoulder over the weekend, yeah, it went away, woke up, and then mm -hmm. it started getting worse and worse and worse, and then it start, got to the point where it was frozen. These patients are kind of similar in terms mm -hmm. of what it says. Um, there's an average two-year delay in the diagnosis of compartment syndrome, and that's why <coughs> conservative care typically has a poor prognosis. Absolutely is because by the time they go conservative route, mm -hmm. it's advanced in its stage. And if conservative care fails like you had with that patient experience, absolutely, the recommended treatment once conservative care fails is the fasciotomy. The fasciotomy, and there's, and there's also some newer things that I'm starting to hear about uh, some docs who are doing some Botox in the oh, really? area. Yeah. I guess still got to do some research on it. There's no, ar yeah. no articles out there yet, but I'm always interested in different things that can help my patients, which is great. So, and that's um, great for the patient that says, no, I absolutely do not want a surgical route. Absolutely. What a great alternative. Absolutely. It's a great alternative. So, I mean, in summary, when we really look at this article, we don't walk away with a ton of, wow, this is really going to change mm -hmm. how I evaluate no. or manage in terms of treatment compartment syndrome of the lower leg. Yep. But yet, if we truly look at it and we assess ourselves as, as providers, we can walk away and say, this will completely enhance how I take a history. Absolutely. And how I manage the case of somebody presenting with symptoms that are related to or look like compartment syndrome. Absolutely. And, and as we know, if you take a good history, it leads you down to 90% of your diagnosis according to the literature anyway. So take a good history. Talk yeah. to your patient. Imagine that. Yeah. Absolutely. Just basic communication. Basic communication. So another great article, Chronicle, Chronic Exertional Compartment Syndrome of the Lower Leg. I loved it. Good article. Loved it. Good article. Hey, thanks for joining us for another Research Friday. I'm Dr. Mall. I'm Dr. Crisp. And if you want to reference the article we just reviewed, check out the link below. And we'll see you next Friday. Next Friday. Well, thanks for reviewing another research article. What the heck is a research article? I don't know. I was, I was like, Maul screwed that one up. That's a blooper on Maul. <laughs> Excellent. I appreciate you reviewing this article. I reviewed this article. All right.